All right, before we get started with the next part of this tutorial, I wanted to show you guys something I made for you. Um, and this is gonna help me make a little bit of money just to, you know, keep the tutorial going. So here we have my Amazon store page, and this is for the suit tutorial. This is all of the stuff that I'll be using for the tutorial, except for like the fabric, which I'll link in the description. And if you hover over these guys, you can see what each purpose of the items are. For example, this shows the percentages of the mixtures and stuff like that. So hopefully that helps out. And um, yeah, enjoy the next part of the tutorial. All right, now we're gonna do the part that everyone kind of worries about. It should go without saying, but if you're allergic to latex, please, please don't put it on your suit. Um, so we're gonna need a few things here. First, pull up your sleeves, cause it's gonna get messy. Um, get some paper towels and some popsicle sticks here. And for our latex, we're using this HV65. It's about 15 bucks on Amazon. I'm using the Tulip brand, Slick Paint. Um, you can use any colors you want. I'm using black, cause I'm just making a classic Spider-Man suit. You're gonna need one of these silicone I don't know if it's silicone, but it's a reusable piping bag. And then we have these tips right here. And these are five different sized tips. I'm not sure which one I'm going to use yet. We're going to test them out though, see how they work. And then this is like a tie for the back of the bag. I'm not exactly sure how this works yet, but we're going to figure it out. And then, you know, there's the coupler for the piping bag as well. So let's go ahead and get started. So this is 30 milliliters of latex. And that's gonna add the stretch we need to the puff paint to make it last a really long time. And let's say the, about 120. We don't wanna add too much puff paint because then we're gonna lose the nice properties of the um, latex. And actually what we can do, the top of the puff paint, a lot of people don't know this, or maybe they just started recently doing it, but it comes off. So be careful when you're actually puff painting your suit if you're doing it with this bottle. And if you wanna refill this bottle, you can do that, cause you can just take off the cap. All right, so we actually went up to the 130 there. We might add just a little bit more latex. All right, so let's, we're just gonna go with that. We just add a little bit more in there. That's probably about 10 milliliters. Um, you just wanna kinda keep track of what your mixture is. So, you know, if you go back and do more, you can kinda match the color pretty good. And now we're just gonna mix this up all the way some acrylic medium. You know, they'll just thicken it up a little bit so you don't have to worry as much about it running. So we're gonna add a scoop about, you know, like that in there. Add a little body to it. And we're just gonna scrape it off with our other popsicle stick, make things simple. So this is the mixture we're going with. This should cover the whole suit. It is, you know, about a whole bottle of puff paint. But of course, if we need more, we can always come back and make more. So now we need this. You're probably wondering, what is this cup for? Well, we gotta get this into here somehow. Kind of fold the edges over. What you do is push all the air out. You can just fill that right up. Try to avoid the edges, cause you know, it'll, it'll stick as it goes down. We're gonna just kind of scrape it in. Yeah, that's pretty much all of it out. Um, like I said, we can always make more so you don't have to be super crazy with getting it all out. Just make sure to kind of keep the tops clean because when you're going to close your bag, you're not going to want to get paint all over your hands. Let's get the top up here. And we're already leaking out the bottom. So let's put a tip on there just for now to make sure that doesn't happen. You know, I'm going to put this against something so it doesn't squeeze out as much but we gotta get this rubber band type of deal on there. If you wanna know how to do this a professional way, go watch like a, a cake piping video. Okay, that's a lot better. So now we can pull this purple thing down. And now we got like a good, nice pressure there. It just gives you like a lot more control. This tip is too big. You can already see it kind of leaking out. Or when you're done, you can unscrew it. I'm not sure how you're supposed to store this. I just put mine in the fridge in a cup, upside down. So let's go with the zero then. See how nice and even that pressure is though right there? And there really shouldn't be any air bubbles since it's in a piping bag. If you want to um, release the pressure a little bit, if it's too much for you, back off the rubber band some. See, it's not really leaking anymore. The pressure is relieved back here. 
So yeah, just, you know, practice. Make sure to w have a paper towel at hand because you're gonna need to wipe your tip a lot with this method. But you can really get in there and do some really smooth lines. Grab one of your smallest pieces and then we have to decide what side of this fabric we wanna use. This side, very metallic and stuff. It looks really nice. This side has more like a sparkly look. I don't really like the sparkles personally. This side still has a nice metallic sheen, but it's not sparkly. Get our little piece right here. And then just kind of leave some extra on the sides. As we are going to cut around this piece and always order more fabric than you need. And these are those Betty Crocker scissors I mentioned in either earlier in this video or in another video. So we got our piece right here and now we're gonna go over to where we're gonna be puff painting. Is we need to tape this piece down. You want everything as flat as possible. Because puff paint's already hard to deal with. I mean, you're putting a liquid on the fabric. And then of course, you're gonna wanna tape this down and you're gonna have to turn off some other lights in your room in order to kind of see what's going on underneath. So yeah, we're gonna tape down this. And I think I saw Johnny Michaels do this first and then I was like, wow, that's genius. And you can reuse this tape because you know, it doesn't really stick like crazy. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and turn off all the other lights so we can see this just fine. And now the hard part. So yeah, we're gonna go ahead and just start with the horizontal webs here. Hopefully you guys can kind of see what I'm doing here. Um, start outside on the seam allowance and then make your way in because it'll look a lot cleaner that way. So now we're gonna go ahead and do the vertical web. This is kind of the hard part. So just go really slow. And then you can always take a break and stop at one of the horizontal webs. Here's our first layer. As you can see, it's not perfect. Um, there are some imperfections in there, but you know, the first layer is never gonna be perfect. You can always fix those in the second layer. That's why I do my first layers super thin. And everything should turn out really good, especially since we're using this piping bag. Cause you can really just drag it on the fabric rather than having to sit above the fabric like you do with the puff paint bottles. I've noticed if you don't blow dry the webs, it keeps more of its shine. So for the second coat, we're not gonna go blow dry the webs. Okay, that's nice and glossy right there. Um, looks pretty good, honestly. So we're just gonna go ahead and go nice and slow. When you first start, you're probably gonna wanna go slower than this. I've been doing it for a few years, so. But it's really not that hard. It's kind of like writing with a pencil, especially with this method. And you see there's a little mess up right there, but that's okay. I mean, it's not gonna be perfect ever. And really be careful to not put your hand over in your wet paint over there. All right, I mean, I would say that's pretty good. And now we gotta do that vertical line and then we'll be done with this piece. And you can always adjust, like move around a little to try to get the best angle possible. All right, so there is our second layer. Um, really nice and shiny. Of course, there's tons of lights in here, so that's kind of why it looks super shiny. But um, yeah, I really like, I'm liking how it's looking. I love shiny webs. And now all we gotta do is the easiest part of this whole thing. You just trace out your piece. Just so you kinda, you know, know where to sew. Seam, seam allowance pretty accurate is important because that's kind of how you line up your pieces. But you're gonna be sewing against webs anyway. So you're gonna have to do special things, which I'll show once we get to the sewing. But you know, puff painting all of this suit is gonna take forever, so. 
that might be in a little while. There we go. Our piece is nice and traced out, and that's all you gotta do for puff painting. All right, so that concludes the puff paint tutorial, but one last thing I wanted to add. Crayola Ultra Washable Markers. Um, they're really good. They're linked in the description. And for tracing here, where there's no horizontal webs, you're gonna wanna trace this line on the other side as well. So for example, and along the webs on the other side as well. So for example, there's the web here, and then I flipped it over on my light table, and then trace that line again on the other side, because when you sew, it's gonna be inside out. So you wanna be able to see where you're sewing. So you can sew right up against that web line to get it nice. You can see the webs right here, they meet up right against the seam. So that's why you kinda of wanna trace that on both sides. So I hope that helps out and yeah, I'll see you in the next tutorial.